Well, bowling fans, thanks for joining us today from New Berlin Bowl. Once again, back in the commentator seat, Joey Serrar from Bowlers Pro Shop. Joey, thanks for sitting in with us again today. Hey, it's always a fun time, and you know we learn as we go. We watch these young bowlers coming through the ranks, uh, getting better and better, and uh, again, it's enjoyable. Absolutely. We're going to enjoy some fine women's bowling today. We have two women in the EFX division match, three very impressive young ladies in the girls division. Enjoy. I'll be back for New Berlin Bowl with that start in just a couple of minutes. 28 state-of-the-art lanes a variety of food and beverage to satisfy your tastes in the ale house or on the lanes banquet facilities available for your 2011 holiday parties or 2012 weddings New Berlin Ale House Cleveland Avenue New Berlin Oh, with me here again, Dwight Albrecht from Spare Time Pro Shop in New Berlin Bowl. And Dwight, you're hosting a new outlet for local and national bowling news on the radio. Yeah, Phil, we're real excited about it. It's going to be on WSSP 1250 AM on Sunday mornings from 8 to 9. And we're going to be discussing the local news. We're going to have a local spotlight section. And then we're going to have a PBA Pro call in every week. And if you missed the live broadcast or you live outside of WSSP's broadcast area, you can always catch those podcasts at sportsradio1250.com. The EFX Division Final from the New Berlin Open here at New Berlin Bowl. And Joey, we've got two new faces on the show. We're going to start off here with Liz Kramer out of Burlington. Yeah, an interesting bowler here, Liz. Uh, kind of a traditional style, but some power, Phil. Nice power back there. Another product of that fine town and country lanes in Burlington youth program down there that Merrill Draper and Teresa Reamer have going and the other coaching staff down there. and. Liz, Burlington High School is going to be a senior this year, if I remember correctly. Right, she's a nine-year veteran, began bowling at age seven. Kind of a traditional start with the ball about waist high. The swing gets a little behind her at times, but she comes through the ball nicely. Covers it up nicely. Always good to get out right away with a mark, especially because with these EFX division matches, they are handicapped to keep the competition a bit easier, and Leanna Hamiak here has a 24-pin handicap advantage over Liz. Leanna, out of Shortwood, Illinois, goes to Manuka High. Also starts the ball about waist high. Short backswing, great follow through. She could hold, hold that pose all day if she wanted to, Joy. You know, and, and Phil, when you see a youngster such as, you know, Elizabeth and, and Sarah, and they need ball speed because they have good roll on the ball and, and they want to use aggressive equipment. How do you teach ball speed? Really, basically, it's just a matter of get, sometimes you need to get the ball in motion a little bit quicker. Her push away for Leanna here could be a little bit higher. It would help her pendulum the swing back and come through. But you know, Leanna is still short of stature. She's only 15 years old. You know she's going to you know fill in a little bit more as she gets older and get a little taller, and that's going to help her generate ball speed as well. Yeah, and you know, like, like you say, I mean, her foot speed looks good to the line, and uh, you, you need ball speed to kind of match her rev rate. So you, you would think a little bit more push away just to create a little higher backswing could help? Or starting the ball in a higher position as well could help. You know, if she started the ball maybe just above the waist instead of right at waist level, she could pick up maybe a mile an hour as well. Mm -hmm. but, but a nice straight swing, and, and that straight swing does dictate the ball path. Uh, the, the straighter your swing plane, normally the more consistent your targeting should be. And it seemed today on this lane pattern, it really seemed that the bowlers that could keep the ball straighter through the front part of the lanes were the ones that were able to stay more consistent with their score, moving from pair to pair. Just a little bit too much hook on that spare attempt for Leanna, and that's going to cut into her lead down to 10 pins. All right, so, so you, would you say it's mainly due to the, uh, the the lane condition? What kind of pattern are the kids bowling on today? Well, it's a Kegel Challenge pattern. It's called Broadway, so it's 39 feet in length. And it's an oil ratio. It's not sport compliant like we've had the bowlers on in the past. It's about a four and a half to one ratio. Uh, there's there's misroom out there. It's a little bit. It's not like your house pattern. It's not even close. These bowlers have a board or two to miss, but you have to be real consistent with your speed. And on that one, Liz just looked a little quick out of her hand. 
You right, can well, see the two, you know, four, five. We'll, we'll have to follow the match and see if she made an adjustment off her first frame, which came a little high. And uh, you know, and we, we've all done it at times. You come high in the left lane, then you you adjust on the right lane. But realistically, you should treat each lane separately. Yeah, each lane has its own characteristics, and we've had a couple matches here on 25 and 26 at New Berlin Bowl in the past, and it always has kind of seemed like lane 26 played a little bit tighter than lane 25. And that's one advantage a bowler has is being a house bowler. You know the house. Yeah. Oh, and talking to Kevin Frew, the manager here at New Berlin Bowl, he always likes giving you know, the little characteristics of the pair. And boy, Liz got herself lined right back up with that shot. Yeah, and she definitely made an adjustment off of the opening shot where she came a little high and uh, she carried the Wally. Wally in the house. In fact, the five pin goes in which direction, Phil? It goes a little to the left and then to the right. It's the that, <laughs> well, that was a, Gr a Grabowski family effort yeah. on that one. And I was thinking the same thing, Joey. And, and Steve was in the shop today, and uh, he bowls in our Monday Flat Earth League at Classic Lanes in Oak Creek, as does Kevin Frew. Ooh. And just a little high for Leanne there, and that ball looked good up to the last couple feet, Phil. Yeah, and that's one thing where maybe a little bit of a slower ball speed's kind of catching her a bit. She can't get that ball when it drives through the head pin like that, gets no deflection whatsoever. A real strong roll. I mean, for Leanna, you can't argue with the strong roll she's got in that, but needs to be back into that 1 3 pocket. And this would be about a 20 to 1 shot for someone of Leanna's ability to get in. A four step approach, and, and good timing, good tempo. Great balance, Phil, and, and you and I both really stress the importance of good balance at the finish. Absolutely. You, you can't name too many PBA players that fall off the shot. No, and even if they don't have their, you know, some coaches are real firm that you got to have that back foot on the floor and that type of thing. Walter Ray Williams has made a lot of money with that follow-through and that ankle waist level on his follow-through on his trail flight. Yeah, I, I think individuals with good coordination can get away with that back foot being off the ground and still be stable. Absolutely. I myself am better off with it on the ground, otherwise I will fall off every shot. And mine's slightly off the ground and then I get lazy with it once the ball's out of my hand and it drops back to the approach, but yeah, I've always been one that's had it off the ground about six or eight inches. Uh, Tough break here for Leanna with the... That's a one count, but she, yeah. she's a, she was on an open fill, so she didn't lose count. And this spare is much easier to convert than a 4-6. Absolutely. And she does. Goes Perfectly to the well. Done. Yeah, goes to the well, picks it all up, and yeah, it's going to help her feel a little bit better coming off the lane that frame. I mean, nobody's happy with just getting that single pin on a bad shot. Right, but, you know, after back-to-back -back opens, any mark is welcome mark. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, let's see if, if Liz can... Get our first double of the match. Good swing, good roll. Ten in the pit, bro. That was a good shot. Absolutely beautiful. I think if she could take uh, about eight more of those and get off the sheet with uh, set a new high game for herself, I think she'd do okay. Well, she does have a high series fill of 710, high individual game of 264. And uh, again, for bowling nine years, you, you finally do learn some of the game's finer intricacies. Absolutely. And now she's learned so much that this is actually going to be her last tournament in the EFX division. Uh, her average has gotten so high, we have an average cap of 190 for our bowlers. Uh, she's exceeding that now in the tournaments and in her league at Town & Country Lane. So next tournament when she bowls at Town & Country, she's going to be fighting out with the big girls like Katie Zwiefelhofer and our top seed today, Sarah Pawlowski on the girls show. So a 190 cap for both boys and girls? Both boys and girls. So with that, we're going to get to our first commercial break of the afternoon. Join Joey and I back from the Berlin Bowl in just a couple of minutes with more EFX Division action. The second half of the EFX Division final coming to you from New Berlin on Bowl for the New Berlin Open. And Joey, Leanna Homiak lost her uh, early lead and now she's got to play catch up. Well, yeah, but it's still anybody's match. Uh, let's see how she responds to this lane. She came high last time and high again. So to me, it appears as though Leanne needs to move in a little bit with her feet and target, though. A little bit with her feet and target. There is still plenty of oil in the middle of the lane. Uh, unlike what you saw for the Red Bull Collegiate Classic on our last show, uh, this one here, plenty of oil in the middle, a little higher ratio, and she should be able to have a little easier time getting that ball down into the 1-3 pocket if she does bump a little bit farther to the left with her feet. Right, and, and it's natural when you're not a power player to be somewhat hesitant to move in too deep. You're, you're afraid 
maybe of leaving a 5-7 or an 8-10, but you know, she's in the match field. She's laying down 11 pins, and you gotta take some gambles in life, and, and this is one of them. Oh, absolutely. And like you said, with her ball speed and her strong roll, though, the last few feet in the lane, you know, odds are, yeah, she might leave a 7-pin light or a 5. I don't think she'd leave a 5-7. It'd be a real bad break if she did. But as you said, you got to take that chance. You only get one shot to win a title here on these shows, and once again, comes up high. And yeah, this time that, that looked better, though, Phil. It looked like she tried to amp up the speed and, and move in a little bit, but you could just see the ball read the lane a little bit early, and, and that, that break point, and when I say read the lane, that means it began its hook motion too soon. Yeah, so there's 39 foot pattern, so there's 21 feet of dry until that ball gets to the head pin. And with Leanne's ball speed only being about 14 and a half miles an hour, she really needs to make sure that she stays as firm as she can with it and get that ball out to the right. It'll come back for her. All right, let's see if her opponent, Liz, can take advantage a little bit and catch another little double. She did, does have one double in the third and fourth frame. Clean through all five frames, so she, you know, she's... I've seen her bowl a lot of youth challenge tournaments over the last three years, and she, as we said before, she's worked her way now. This is the last time we're going to see her in the EFX division uh, because her average is so high. But it's been a lot more with spare making. And so far, five frames, looking at six frames, staying clean. And right. that's and really been the, the key to her average improvement. And she's really not making all easy spares. I mean, she made the 3 6 10. She's made the 2 4 5, both choppable spares. And she will stay up from her strike line here and just shoot a little bit left of her target line and carry the 1 2 on the crossover. Gets rid of those two, helps her maintain an 11 pin lead. And look at that, Joey, above180.com. Lots of good interviews you've had with various bowling personalities lately. Well, yeah, we've had Norm Duke on and Sean Rash and uh, some of the top coaches, uh, such as Del Warren, uh, DeAndre S. Beatty. Ron uh, Hoppy was a really good Ron one, too, Hoppy as well, was a recently. Good interview, sure. And uh, we, we have a few interesting shows coming up in the, in the near future, so tune on in and you can even download it on iTunes. Though. Absolutely, above180.com and speaking of opportunistic, I think Liz got a little bit there with that high squasher snowplow strike. Yeah, and you, you got to take the breaks when they come because the bad breaks are soon to follow. <laughs> In fact, an uh, upcoming interview, Phil, is a friend of yours, fellow left-hander, Chad Sorcy, UWM bowling coach. Yeah, he just had both his teams in that Red Bull Collegiate Classic and uh, got him out of the TV show. A little couple bad breaks and a uh, little spare shooting bugaboos got him uh, against UW-Whitewater for the girls and against Monona State for the men. But uh, nothing to shake your head out with two second place finishes in a nice collegiate no. event like that. No, any anytime you make the finals of any event, uh, you, you did things right. You can see Four here. step approach and nice and close to that foul line. And a hook away with a plastic ball yes, and that shows did. there's still friction even with polyester equipment. Well, yeah, and, uh, to, to counteract that, maybe slide a little further left. Use that oil in the middle of the lane. We've seen some of the young ladies in our shows too, they take their wrist devices off too because it helps them uh, come through the ball a little bit flatter instead of around it because those devices keep your wrist so firm. I don't know if I would be a proponent of that, Phil, because it's going to change your feel and release somewhat. And that was a mirror image of the last shot. Absolutely. Let's hope she doesn't have a mirror image of the spare. Well, I'm sure you know, she'll make a move here. Normally you learn by your mistakes, and she should go to school on this. And she's either going to move further left with her feet, which is likely the better move, or she'll throw it further to the right, which could be dangerous. Flirting with the gutter. And she converted <laughs> it just perfectly. <laughs> That's a tough spare, though, for anybody. It's very easy to chop. That's exactly it. You always want to make sure you take that chop out of play. And, you know, nothing more frustrating when, you know, you think you throw a good shot at a spare and you chop a six off a ten, or, or for a lefty like me, you chop a two off a four. And uh, it can just really change your outlook on a game in a hurry. Liz up, looking to get back in the pocket. And that was a good shot off her hand, just a little bit of a soft ten. And she should have no problem with the conversion here. Hopefully I didn't give you the kiss of death. Don't think you have. I know it's been a little bit since we've had you doing the color commentary on the shows, but I don't think, I think the kiss of death goes away after a while. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't have that much power. <laughs> if we did, we'd be picking lottery numbers left and right. And she is clean through the front seven frames. And it looks, oh, oh and another one that hooked away. away. I will never speak again. <laughs> You know, and speaking of chopping spares, I had another talented lefty in the shop the other day, Eric Pearson, uh, from Waukesha, Wisconsin, and 
He says, you know, it seems every sparrow I'm shooting at this year, I'm chopping. No matter which sparrow it is, if there's more than a pin up, I chop it. <laughs> and my suggestion, Eric, was next time you leave a choppable spare, try and chop it. Because we're not that good. And we won't be able to chop it because we're not that accurate. Yeah. You only have, what, maybe a half inch of room at the pins to right. chop one off the right. other? And, and inches both sides to make it. Yeah. So my suggestion was next time you leave a 2-4, for example, Eric's a left-hander, I said try and chop it at 2 off the 4, and you won't. I'm going to take that advice when I uh, go sub in league tonight. I'll let you know how that works out next time I see it. Uh, that's good to hear. <laughs> well, that's if you leave any spares, Phil. Oh, I'll leave spares. Don't worry about that. Well, with that, Liz Kramer, after nine frames, maintains a 13-pin lead. Yeah, which is really nothing if, if you know, Leanne can, Leanna can carry a little double here, but she does have to hit the pocket, or maybe not. She could get back-to-back crossword. So 199 with her handicap if she strikes out in the ninth and tenth. And, oh, and that was so close. And a, a difficult spare, especially when, you, when your speed is soft. And we've seen it before with her, her polyester ball. It's still going to hook a little bit because it'll hit that dry last part of the lane. And I think she'll move even farther left than she has the last two shots well, on I the mean, approach. And, and she's reasonably far left, as you can see here. But it's all about the direction of her approach. Does she drift slightly to the right? And she does, where she's sliding on board 25, whereas we normally recommend sliding on 35 or further left. So she... She walks toward her target. Walks towards her target. So, yeah, so good thing for her might be she may have to hug that ball return when she's on her right lane in order to shoot her 10 pins. Right, and, and being rather, rather thin, I mean, she should be able to hug it much easier than you or I. Good point. Well, looking to finish strong here. If she strikes out, she could put a little pressure on Liz and just make her really get good count. But even that's gone away now, so... Yeah, and, and again, is this her first time on TV, Phil? So? Both bowlers first... Well, not Liz's first time on TV. She's been on TV before with Burlington right. during a high school match, but this is her first solo attempt on TV. But before Leanna, correct? Leanna as well, her first time on TV. And you know, someone that's really... She's really taken her game seriously over the last couple of years. She does have a high game of 253, but she's still looking to get... Uh, Three good games together. She hasn't broken that 600 barrier yet. She's gotten close. I think she'll get there during this next oh, season. With, without a doubt, Phil. You know, once she builds up a little strength and stamina and just gets a little more ball speed behind it, I mean, she does have a good role and definitely a good foundation. Oh, absolutely. Like you talked about earlier, Joy, that balance is absolutely phenomenal for Leanna. And it's a good thing for parents to, you know, pass along to your kids and get get them looking like Leanna at the finish. And yeah, this lane looks a little tricky at times, Phil. That the, you know, if you're just a little far right, that ball does not recover too well. And we've seen the one, two, four a number of times here. Yeah, and and as Kevin told us before the telecast started, 26 plays a little bit tighter than 25 here at New Berlin Bowl, and it's showing its true colors right now. But Liz Kramer going to wrap up her first Youth Challenge title in the EFX division, and now she gets to go fight the big kids. <laughs> well, the Kitties and the, the Kitty Z's and the, and the Sarah Pablaskis. Oh, yeah, and, you know, a lot of times you have to pay your dues initially, and you're going to get beat up a little bit, but then the day will come where she'll be able to hold her own and, uh, and win her share of matches. Absolutely. I mean, Joey Dietz won our first Hammer U Challenge telecast, and... We had a handicap division, and next now he's bowling for UW Whitewater on their 18. So he's doing I real talk well. with Joe Dietz now and then on Facebook, and he's a, he's a great young man and an upcoming talent. With that, we're done with the EFX division final. We'll be back with our opening match in the girls bracket from New Berlin Bowl in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, I think girl the girls semifinal for the 2011 New Berlin Open and Joey we got a couple familiar faces on here haven't seen him in a couple of shows but Ashley Vickery is going to start us off and pretty comparable skill levels I would say Phil both players with accomplished big scores Ashley's high game 290 725 for a high set and you can see why with shots like that great opening shot good balance at the line great leverage and her opponent Brianna Cubito 18 years of age only a high game of 300, high series of 768, and we will soon see why. And state champion in 2010 for high school against our top seed, Sarah Pablaski. So she's hoping to get another shot at Sarah, but... Yeah, just a little more hook and a little less speed, I would say, than Ashley, but a little more hand as well. 
But solid at the line, great foundation to build on. Yep. Brianna from Ashwabanon. Going to college this semester at Milwaukee Area Technical College in Milwaukee, so nice and close for a lot of our U Challenge events this season, and just left yeah, all the way. We kind of saw that right off her hand, and uh, it appeared to be a spare ball, and it, once you miss left, it's, it's going to stay left, naturally. So an, an early opening for Ash. Yep. It's nice to get the extra bonus 10 pins from your opponent early. Oh, absolutely. Yep. It's Loose a, up the swing. It's, it's a long match. See if Brianna can rebound from that, playing inside line, banking it out to the track, soft 10. And that one just looked a little quick off her hand, and when a, you heard a kind of a loud thump there going into the lane, and maybe just not a strong enough roll, obviously, to get through the pin deck. And the, the left lane hooking a little more than the right lane, uh, that ball can zap some of its hooking energy in the mid lane, get to the pocket, and kind of hit flat. Five steps, pretty far from the foul line. Has no problem covering it up though. Yeah, normally you want to be within within a foot of that foul line, wouldn't you think, Phil? Uh, that's what I always recommend coaching because you know, otherwise, two things, you can drop the ball into the approach or into the early part of the lane, and that's going to change the roll on your ball because a lot of times the first foot or 18 inches of the lane isn't oiled with these new machines that they have. And second of all, consistency. You know, you want it, the closer you are to the head pin, the less lane you got to shoot over. Right, yeah, well, why make the pocket further away? And I mean, Ashley threw a great shot there. That should have been an opening double. Same kind of pin action she did get in the opening Sansa, but three pins around it, none of them hit it. Yeah, just one of those bad breaks that you just got to take in bowling and go back, grab your spare ball, cover it up. It looks right. like she's done that nicely. Cross lane, nice and easy, and it almost seemed like she slows down a little bit on her spare, but dead center on the pin. Exactly. It's not all, you know, you see a lot of guys in, in leagues and they get their spare ball and they throw it a million miles an hour faster than they normally do. Really no need to do it. No, there is no need other than to impress your friends a little bit, but <laughs> all you got to do is knock it over. It's possible you could chop less spares throwing firmer though than slow, but I mean, if you sacrifice accuracy, what good is it? Exactly. And she's going to need to be accurate on this spare getting half of the rack, leaving the bucket plus the seven bend. And, you know, another half inch in the pocket, and that could have been a strike. So, you know, five looks bad to a bowler of Ashley's caliber, but it was only fractions of an inch from a strike, and that's about the best way to make that one up. Exactly. you got to pretend that that 2-5 is actually your 1-3 pocket, and she gets it perfectly done. So with that, Brianna Cubito down by only six pins because that five count was on a spare for Ashley. So if Brianna can get a quick double here, she can find herself back in the lead. Now her ball choice today, Phil, is a Roto Grip Theory, which is one of the strongest hooking balls on the market. But because of that, that ball, if it starts hooking early, will straighten out on the back part of the lane. And I think that's what we're seeing there, yeah. as well as on her soft 10 pin. Yeah, I mean, you watch that replay, and the pins are moving, but they're not moving in, I guess you can say, an aggressive manner. They just kind of all fell over, and nothing got near the 7 for no problem with the spare this time and you know on her bio she'd fill her other ball options are her spare ball only she says I have no other ball to ball down to and I mean that's that's risky it, it is absolutely risky but college student just moved into town as we tape this and you know sometimes space is a premium and she's got a lot of stuff back at home with the parents up in the Green Bay area so to make it this far with just one ball is pretty impressive though. Right, and, and there's another one she got a little wide and strong balls when you get wide will not recover generally as much as a weaker ball which can store more energy for that last 20 feet so she's got a work cut out for her in that it's a tough pattern and she has a ball motion which is probably less than ideal. Now, that said, if she executes beautifully, naturally she can strike, but slight little mistakes may not strike well. Exactly, and I mean, we have we know the talent Brianna has. I mean, she, she's had 268 on TV before uh, to win her championship against Amanda Garavet back at the Kalahari last season. Can, you know, she overcome her ball motion and overcome a bowler that's filling frames like Ashley's doing right now? Right, and, and actually we can see her ball is clearing the front cleanly here, and she's got that little back end motion. Even though that one didn't carry, 
it wasn't a weak ten. Not at all. And and again, it's always good to have a good look. Even though you may not score, I'd much rather have a good look than no look. It keeps that swing loose. You can keep a little more positive in your head, getting up on every shot, knowing, hey, I make my shot, I'm in the pocket. Right, so, you know, from what we see here, ball motion alone, advantage Ashley. Uh, credentials, slight advantage to Brianna, but not much. I mean, they're both pretty equally talented. And uh, we have a 10-pin match early in the game. You know, and the one thing for Ashley, a couple times we've seen her on TV in the past, is that you know, the spare bug has bitten her once in a while with, with missing easy spares on TV, but she's covered everything up so far nicely. And a little left off, off the hand, but I'll tell you, it, it just held pocket. Abs absolutely beautiful. With that, we're going to get into the break. We're going to be back with the second half of our girls' semifinal for the New Berlin Open in just a couple of minutes. Half of our girls' semifinals in the books here from New Berlin Bowl, and Joey Brianna Cubito is down by 10 pins, but she's got the game to come back in a hurry. Well, you know, she's got a high rev rate. She knows how to play the inside part of the lane. I would say a little more speed or loft could do it for her. But let's see if she figures that out. And that was beautifully done, Phil. And the ball matched up perfectly there. Yeah, she may have bumped in slightly to the left. Right. Just so it kind of stores that energy level better. And then a little deflection there we still saw. But she got the 10 pin off the wall. Six pin doing its job. Well, she, she wants to thank her mom, Tracy, dad, John, and her sister, Lexi, for all their support. Needs the whole pocket nicely. Oh, second effort. Yeah, and again, that's back to back. Slight deflection in the pocket, but the six doing its job both times. So she's making it work, Phil, even though we, we definitely saw a deflection with the ball after it entered the pocket. Sign of a good ball. Right Absolutely. There. Get that strong roll into the pocket and let the pins do the work on each other. Now Ashley's going to need to get a strike here to get the lead back. And that was huge because you don't want Brianna to get too much confidence, like she's going to run away with it. And that keeps her 10-pin advantage. And you can just see that ball, less deflection, a little bit, but less deflection than what we're seeing with Brianna's ball entering the pocket. And, and that's, that's important for listeners out there to watch the ball leave the pin deck to, to see where it finishes. Oh, I mean, you talk to guys on tour, you know, you talk to the Chris Barnes and the Sean Rash of these guys, and they're watching their ball all the way through the pin deck because that's the way they know the adjustments they may have to make even on their next shot on that lane. Right, and they generally want to see the ball split the 8-9, which means basically finish right off the center of the pin deck. She needs to split the 310 here with that ball, yes, and that's does. not going to do it. Oh! No, but there is another way to make it, Phil. <laughs> Other than going between the 310, you can use the carom shot. I don't think she had it planned that way, but you can't give well, it back, and she's not going to. There's no doubt about if that. If we ask her, she might say, yeah, I had it planned that way. <laughs> Helps her maintain an 8-pin lead, but if Brianna can extend it out to 3 in a row... Right, but if we look back at Ashley's game, that, that makes up for that 7-pin she didn't carry in the second frame. Good speed, good loft, good turn, and a good 10. So she's definitely figured out what to do with that ball. And that hit better than the previous two that struck Phil. Absolutely, that six pin just up and around the 10. Huge bad break, but now you just gotta shake it off, grab that spare ball, and cover it up. But as we know, the better the bowler, the more you're in the pocket, the more 10 pins you're gonna leave. The key is converting it, and she does very nicely. Covers it up well. After seven frames, less than a mark dividing our bowlers. We want to thank our friends at Action Heating and Cooling. Once again, sponsoring the Action Heating and Cooling Open. That will be coming up shortly, thanks to our friends at Time Warner Cable Sports 32. And we'll see how Brianna can respond after that bad break. Got it a little wide, Phil, and it came back a little flat. Yeah. And again, that's what we alluded to earlier, those strong pieces, when you miss right with them, they're not going to be as angular at the back end. And this is not an easy spare. No, and especially when the ball's using up energy, as you said, uh, she tries pitching this one farther right and trying to get the lane to help it, probably won't do it. She's going to have to stay direct with this 2-4-5. Which she does, really flattens it out. Yeah, perfectly done. Just hit that two-pin dead center, and you should make it. Split the four or five nicely, and 
So we have about a 14 pin lead about, would you say, or a 12, 12 pin lead. 12 pin lead for so Ashley and here comes, you know, she needs to stay clean. I think if she stays clean, she, as you said earlier, she has the, the ball matchup advantage over her opponent right now. It's going to be tough for Brianna to get up there and throw a double. A little left. That was left off the <laughs> hand and a, and a huge break. And here's where bowling's not always fair. Say she throws it a little better in that she throws it a little further right and goes right through the face and leaves the big four. You know, it, it's a huge open. She loses the lead. But in this case, she maintains the lead and could possibly throw it all. It, it's one of the quirks of bowling that we've all had to learn to live with over the years in matches. We've had opponents cross over to win matches against us and that type right. of thing. And, and, and then it, her good break gets taken yeah. away a little bit there. But that was a soft 10. And again, with a 12-pin lead, we know count is important as well as every spare. Yeah. Needs to spare to maintain that lead. And then that would give her a maximum score of 212 if she were to start out in the 10th. And the maximum score right now for Brianna would be 208 since she's working on a spare, or I'm sorry, 210 since she's working on a spare right. in the eighth frame. So if, if Ashley can double in the 10th, she shuts her out, correct? Correct. And we gotta see what- But Brianna's up first, so that's yeah. irrelevant. So, so Brianna knows she needs a double, actually a turkey. To have any chance of really winning this yeah. match. Yeah, because you can't rely on your opponent opening. And that just read up early. Yeah, yeah, didn't it look like she moved a little right, Phil? It did, like she was trying to come off of that last shot. The you know, last time on that lane, she left a little bit of a weak 10 and, and tried moving where she'd kick the 10 out. Yeah, it, it, you know, again, she left a 2 4 5 on the left lane. It almost looked like she adjusted on the right lane a little for it, but only she knows if she did that. Yeah. No problem with spare conversion. So she has to now hope for a double in the 10th and hope her opponent loses some count. Well, if she can strike out for 198, that would force Ashley to mark because Ashley, if she went nine miss, would have 190. So uh -huh. a double here is huge for Brianna because otherwise Ashley will just have to step up in the 10th and just show up with good count. Right. Nine spare nine and Ashley wins with 201. Right. And that's just... That's gone. <laughs> so, and again, I, I can't fault Brianna's execution as much as just her, her ball did not match up as well as if she would have been able to play further right with that ball. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they're bowling in the same lane condition they bowled on all day, and the lanes weren't re-oiled before the TV show, so she knew where she ended up in the semifinals, and maybe there was just too much oil depletion, and the ball lost its look. Well, yeah, we all like to stay with the same ball through games one, two, and three, but, you know, it's a long format for the kids, and the lanes definitely won't play the same now as they will when they first see them. Exactly. I mean, over nine games, I mean, some of the some of the, some of the guys on the guys' side, I mean, you'll see Ryan Zager, who was playing the lanes relatively straight, and he was still changing balls every couple of games, right. shelling down, and still probably moved his feet 15 boards left during the day today. Right, but the boys, you know, the, the advantage most of them have is they can kick up the speed, they can kick up the loft, they can change that rev rate a little quicker, and when they're forced in the fifth arrow, they might have the nut, whereas a, a, a human, a normal human bowler, <laughs> will not carry as well as a Ryan Zager. Yeah, and I think... Or a Cody. Going into the next match, I mean, we've got Sarah Pawlowski. She's a rare talent on the lady side of things, and uh, Sarah can get in there deep if she has to and, and put more hand in it and loft it. I mean, yeah, Sarah can, can do some sick things with a bowling ball. Yes, indeed. And that's lock jaws for Ashley right there with that strike. She only needs a good count anyway getting up right. to the 10th. So you got superpower against with Sarah Pawlowski next match. You've got Ashley, who has a pretty conventional game. But the she lanes knows are, the pair. She knows the pair. Lanes are breaking down in a hurry. I think it's going to be a pretty, pretty tight match. No doubt about that. Ashley's going to stay, cl stay clean if she makes a spare for a 202. And we were just saying before how she was having problems with spares on TV before, and it looks like she's gotten past that. Will 202 get it done against Sarah, though? That is a very good question, and we're going to find out with that when we come back for the girls' final from the New Berlin Open. Join us again in a couple of minutes from New Berlin Bowl for that girls' final match. Barbiers, a Milwaukee institution since 1963. Great Italian food for dine-in or carry-out, and great times for your family and friends. Barbiers, in the heart of South Milwaukee, and near Miller Park on Blue Mound Road. 
the ladies finals from the New Berlin Open the 2011 edition and Joey Ashley Vickery coming off a big win in the semifinal match can she do it again versus Sarah Pawlowski well I think she can Phil because she knows the pair and she has a look on it, not a great look and and if that was only a board left of her target and it goes beak then it's not a great look so she's got to work it out for her because we know Sarah can do magical things with a bowling ball Absolutely, and strike from places that most humans dare venture. And Ashley looking to make it the way she made it the first game, and there's the bad break coming yeah, back. Yeah, and you don't want to spot Sarah any pins. And, and you can already see Sarah coming up, and it's time to take care of business. And the replay, boy, another half inch anyway around that six with that six going around the ten, and it knocks it over. Sarah, the monster, Pablaski, as some of her friends like to call her now. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, she gets the job done. Solid at the line, foot in the air, high rev rate, can play in with the big boys, and, and she's going to create some area. But the advantage she has over Brianna in the earlier match is Sarah has a little more ball speed, so she can clear that mid lane easier. Yeah, and we could already see by how much the ball was hooking for both ladies towards the end of that semifinal match. Uh, Sarah's going to be able to pick things up. And pretty interesting there, Joey. You can see on Sarah's left foot she's wearing a tennis shoe. Yes, well, foot. she's a planter right there. No slide. No need to slide. And most power players in today's games have minimal slide or a plant. Yeah, partway through qualifying today, uh, the approaches here at New Berlin recently resurfaced. They've been doing a nice job keeping the lanes up for everybody, Kevin Fru and his crew, and uh, she found the approaches a little too slippery for her liking, and she keeps an extra mm -hmm. tennis shoe in her bag, and this isn't the first time Sarah's done this. And Right, now will that affect Sarah, or affect Sarah later in life with all the games she bowls on in a week? And, and she put some force into that slide, and there's you can see that rev rate a little bit at the end. Just vacuums the pins right off the deck. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen that even with guys on the Pro Tour back when they started doing it in the, in the 90s. A guy like Jess Stayruck, I mean, was a very well planter and ended up having some knee problems later on in his career. So it could be the same thing here. Right, and you'd hate to see that, you know, her career cut short, you know, due to just undue wear and tear on the knee. But she attacks the line, Phil, and, and bowling collegiately now for Robert Morris. Robert Morris in Chicago, yes indeed. One of the better programs nationally. Uh, you know she's going to be logging 50 to 100 games a week some weeks. Oh, absolutely, with competitions on weekends, practices during the week. and But one advantage with Robert Morris is they do have an athletic training staff. staff. They are considered a sport at the college, and they have the same access to athletic training staff that, staff that basketball players and soccer players have. So that's going to help her out as well, where you and I would try to do something like that after being in splints for a week. We'd have to go see a doctor. And a great shot by Ashley there, so, 10 yeah. back and in the I, I think Ashley realizes, you know, she's got the Tiger here. Uh, she's got to have her game to have a chance at this match. But, you know, early advantage you got to give to Sarah right now. Strong five-step, just so loose coming through on the bottom of that swing and kicks the 10 out. Uh, to be young and be able to kick pins around like that, Joey, I remember. Yeah, but when we were young, we couldn't do that, Phil. Come on now. No, there's there's no way. I mean, Both of us put together, maybe. <laughs> No doubt about that. I mean, if our rev rates were, say, 250 when we were her age, you know, and she's 500, it would take both of us exactly. to create the power that Sarah can put. And her dad's got power. Gene's got power. I exactly. with him at Highland Lanes, and he's got power, but he don't have Sarah power. No, nope, Ben. Oh, good 10. Power's and, around the 10. Yeah, and a hard 10, six or over the top. And uh, from what we hear, Sarah's spare game has increased tremendously from her high school years. Yeah, a lot of coaching. She's gotten some coaching over the summer from Dale Lehman, the head coach at Robert Morris in Chicago, and really has helped her out getting focused for that spare game and goes to that polyester ball and covers it up nicely. And even though she doesn't leave as many spares as most, you don't want to miss them. No, absolutely not. I mean, it's just if she misses that right there, Ashley can get up in the lead and even extend it if she would have right. gotten a third strike. All right, and, and it's, it's it's heartbreaking sometimes when you throw a turkey or a four-bagger and then make a, or you miss a makeable spare, it just kind of deflates your your mentality. And that one, wow, I'm surprised it hooked up that hard on the back end on 26. Yeah, and, and she caught some good hand in that fill and, and the factor speed is a little softer. It just knifed through. 
and that's a tough break, but uh, she almost has to go for this early in the match, though. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, she's going to be down. Count, little irrelevant at this point early in the match, and that's just left off of her hand. Yeah. And you can just see the, the difference in, in, I mean, she's a little deflated just by the way she's walking back. Little shoulders down a little. And the carefulness and tentativeness she showed there throwing at that seven pin. And now rushing into her fifth frame on top of it too, right. and that's just yeah. left out of her hand. And yeah, oh, she, yeah. So she, you know, she's not beaten, but but she doesn't look like she did in the last match. Yeah, and the confidence looks a little shot right now. And then again, when you know who you're bowling against, you know you know somebody that's got six U Challenge titles under your belt, under their belt, and you're looking for your first, or pardon me, your second. Uh, it gets tough. Yeah, and we almost could sense that coming, just the, the carefulness in her execution. But she's got to work cut out for her, Phil. Yes, she does. And we'll be back with Sarah Poblaski's fifth frame after this short break. Make sure you stay tuned. Well, Joey, the tides turned here. It looked like it was going to be a close match until Ashley got up in the fourth and fifth, and that back to back opens. Right, and. Sarah knows the gravity of the situation, and when your opponent's down, you pound. She attacks, she gets it wide, and it came back pretty hard. And this is no gimme. No, nope, not for Sarah, especially with that rev rate. The old 3-6 is very choppable, and, or if you get too aggressive, you slide behind that 3-pin and only take the 6 out. So let's see if she throws this carefully or aggressively. Big difference. Stays with her strike ball, which is interesting. Cuts it loose, so she threw it aggressively with a hooking ball. That's interesting, Phil. Yeah, I really thought she was going to go to her spare ball on that one, but... Well, you know as well as I do, when you throw a spare ball aggressively through the middle of the lane, it can hydroplane and skate off and miss that three pin by six inches, and you wonder what yeah. happened. So maybe she wanted a ball with some traction and just throw it hard and flat. I mean, especially with her speed in the 19 mile an hour range, the high rev rate. And I think we just saw hydroplane right there, even with... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she just got out, out, of, out of timing, a little out of whack there. And uh, she'll figure it out. Yeah, I mean, she does have quite a large lead right now. She's up over 40 pins. and Or is that an over adjustment from the last shot? <laughs> probably could have been. I mean, she did have that Rattler... 10 pin last time. Well, I mean, where she came high in the frame before oh, good. with 3-6 and yeah. then she figured, oh, I'll just bump in a little bit and amp it up. But again, different lane. Different lane, exactly. So where, where I was thinking the same thing, but I was thinking sticking on lane 25, you were thinking exactly how probably she thought on that. Right. Still keeps her up with a 35 pin lead with Ashley up trying to not get three opens in a row. Needs to get back online, and that's just left in a big break to just leave the six and the ten. Yeah, yeah, she's got a really fine line there to hit, Phil. And again, probably hesitant to move in too deep, thinking her ball may not finish quite well enough. And she knows now it's 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 an all or nothing effort. Either she starts swinging strikes, or you know, just filling frames isn't going to cut it right about now. Yeah, she got that one. I mean, it almost could have chopped it, but. But like we were talking earlier, you don't want to overthrow your speed at a spare, but normally throwing it slower is almost asking for trouble, isn't it? Well, absolutely. The ball gets a little more time to hook. It gets a little more angular going into a, 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 a choppable combination, and next thing you know, it takes it right out. And that was left off her hand. And she might not be missing by much, Phil, but you got a bowler left of your line right now mm -hmm. who revs it up who could be removing oil you had in the previous match. Absolutely. So all of a sudden, you know, Ashley misses by a half inch at the arrows, it's not close. And speaking of not close, oh, oh that well. one. Yeah. No. And, and that's just probably a little frustration in there. And she can't wait to get this game over. Yeah, I mean. We've all been there. You work hard all day, you make yeah. the TV show, you get a chance for a championship, and things just go away on you in a hurry. Uh, it's an empty, lonely feeling that all bowlers experience at one point or another. And I'm sure even Sarah has had her moments where she just couldn't wait to get off the pair. Oh, yeah. I mean, last year during the challenge match at uh, in the Spring Thaw shootout, she's going against Riley Smith, who's just incredibly on fire all day. And 
Sarah with a couple bad breaks early, and then it was just kind of going through the motions for her. So she's been there as well, but you got to learn from it, kids. It makes you a better bowler, and that's what we see today. Sarah bouncing back. She's not throwing the greatest game in the world right now, no, but she's but staying she, clean. She, she attacked that frame. Yeah. And that ball just didn't quite make the turn on the back. I mean, I don't know if she realizes her speed that she can create at times, because... I mean, that looked like 21 miles per hour for going down lane. Easily. Well, maybe not easily 21, but it's definitely 19 and a half to 20 for sure. Right, and, you know, it will register faster when you're in the center part of the lane because of the sensors being down lane. And, and she's in the oil, so her ball will maintain speed more than when it hits friction. And she's sliding right around board 38, 39. Back to back two four five. So, Sarah, you're showing your consistency here, <laughs> and your spare shooting ability. Yeah, she might just be a little bit too deep for that ball right now, but it's keeping her out of trouble. Yeah, I mean, yeah. very yeah, makeable spares. Yeah, you know, and I'm looking at her bio sheet, and every time I've read Sarah's bio sheet, there's always a little note on there. P.S. Mom, I need a new ball. <laughs> now, mind you, she has critical theory, an infection, a rain, a rattler, an alpha max, a backslash, a nasty, a spare ball, and that's the only one she has listed on her bio sheet. She probably has a dozen more in the dorm room. Sarah, you may have enough, trust me. <laughs> but it's always nice to get a new one. I'm, I'm right there with you, girl. Yes, indeed. And this year with High Five Gear being one of our primary sponsors of the Youth Challenge Series. Sorry, Sarah, you're not going to get a, a bowling ball out of it this year, but you will get a 50% off a fully customizable High Five jersey. Thanks and to the staff those there. Those are some plenty nice shirts, though. Yes, they Comfortable are. Comfortable as all get out. Cool to wear. Absolutely. And they do make you look good. Absolutely. And they can throw anything on there. I mean, some of the designs that I've seen come out of their staff now is just amazing. And the one they have now, because they just recently signed Chris Barnes to their staff at High Five Gear. He has his own shirt. You can get it right on the High Five Gear website, highfivegear.com. Speaking of staff signings, uh, I just saw this on, on the internet. Walter Ray has now signed with Brunswick. Back to where he used to be that years ago. That be interesting, and Brunswick is starting to make some pretty good products. Yeah, they've got the DVA line, correct? Yeah, the DVA line. They have some new uh, chemically enhanced cover stocks called the Nexus series of balls, and they now can create some ball motion never seen in Brunswick's before, in that they have more back end. Probably see a few of those Brunswick staffers on TV this year. Oh, you will. Sarah looking to get Sarah. something going tonight. Ball change, and <laughs> you see, notice how she kind of mocked her speed down just a little so that ball could commit at the break point. Well, with that, Sarah Poblacci is going to win her seventh U Challenge Series title. Her and Katie Zweef will offer keep going back and forth, back and forth on who's winning the most titles, and they're back to a tie again at seven. And they both get the job done differently, but they're both very, very skilled in how they do it. Same ball, moved inside, and, and definitely has a better look with this ball. And, and that's why you should never go to a turn with one option, because the wrong option is two, four, fives, and nine counts. The right option can be strikes. The wrong option's the donator. The right option's the, 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 the check in the pocket on the way out the door. And we're going to fast track through the end of this here since the match is no longer in doubt, and Ashley comes up high again. She just wants to finish up and get out of here and head back home to Mendota, Illinois. And she's going to Illinois Valley Community College now. And you know, she's going to be looking to start a collegiate career shortly. And how do you not, how does that forepin even try to stand against that ball? <laughs> that thing got tomahawked into the rake. And Sarah's shot. Yeah, and Sarah with a maximum score of 218 if she strikes on her final attempt. And I would say the odds are better than 50 50, she will. I and don't, yeah. Ashley's top score, 145 if she strikes on her fill ball. 145, not Ashley's best effort, but she's made plenty of our shows before, and she's going to get over the hump again and get that second U Challenge title in her pocket sometime soon. Monster mode for Sarah. <laughs> Boom. Boom, the pins are gone. A great win for Sarah Poblaski against Ashley Vickery. Join I are going to come back from New Berlin Bowl and get the show wrapped up for you in just a couple of minutes. 28 State of the Art Lanes. A variety of food and beverage to satisfy your tastes 
in the Ale House, or on the lanes. Banquet facilities available for your 2011 holiday parties or 2012 weddings. New Berlin Ale House, Cleveland Avenue, New Berlin. Well, Joey, great bowling on the girls' side today. Sarah Poblaski comes out of the gates in that final match and did something we don't usually see out of her, marked them to death. You know, she put it in monster mode, and uh, it just shows how her game has evolved from just being a, a great strike player to now the complete player in that she makes spares. Absolutely. Those girls that are bowling against her Robert Morris college team, better watch out this season. Sarah could be Rookie of the Year in the college ranks. Yeah, you know, she's fun to watch. She's a good kid. Uh, she comes from some good bloodlines with the bowling heritage with the family. So, uh, yeah, she easily could be Bowler of the Year. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the girls' show here from the New Berlin Open. Boys' show coming up from New Berlin as well in the next show. And, Joey, great bowling action, I'm sure, from the guys, too. Yeah, and, you know, Ryan Zager, talk about Ryan. He's got a nice game, almost as good as Katie's, but getting there. Absolutely. He's going to have to climb that ladder. Join us from New Berlin for that show. For my friend Joey Serrar, I'm Phil Brilo. And parents, take the kids bowling. They'll have fun for life. We'll see you again.